Hey everybody and welcome to this, my first of two, no, scratch that, this is my first of three videos on this, ooh, very dusty, I can't believe it, why didn't I clean this, ah, on the Nikon N80. The Nikon N80 is an interchangeable lens SLR and that simply means that you can take the lens off and put it back on or put a different one on at any time when you're not taking a picture and not ruin your images. It has matrix center weighted and spot metering modes. Matrix is basically if you were to take this whole scene, an old averaging meter would look at this whole scene and try to figure out a, a setting to make it all gray. Matrix looks at the whole scene but balances different parts of the scene differently to basically be like a thinking averaging meter. I think that's the best way I can think of to put it is it's like an averaging meter that does a somewhat better job. It has shutter speeds of 30 seconds up to 1 4,000th of a second, which is a pretty zippy maximum or well, minimum shutter speed and bulb. The viewfinder magnification right here is 0.75-ish X. I couldn't find an exact number for it. Um, that's approximately what other people reported, and that sure as heck is about what it looks like looking through here. The frame coverage on it is 92%. Now what that means is if what you were looking at right now is what was going to be on the film when you took a picture, that what you see in your viewfinder would be about 75% the size of what's coming into your camera um, and going to reach the film, so it's basically shrinking the image a bit. And 92% means that you're losing about 4% on each of the sides of the image, which means there will be a little bit of the image outside of what you see in the viewfinder that makes it onto the film. And that's good because that allows you to um, have a little bit of room cropping the image when you actually get the negative back. It has a fixed focusing screen with autofocus point indicators, as well as a center weighted meter area circle that everything in the circle will tell you what is in your center weighted metering spot. And the flash sync speed is 1 1 25th of a second. This was made by Nikon in Thailand from 2000 to 2009. So this had a good and long run. It was preceded by the Nikon F801, which was called the N8008 in the US. And it was concurrent with the F5, F6, F100, F70, F75, FE10, Pronia S, FM3A, FM10, F65, and F55. So a pretty wide array of cameras spanning the entire spectrum of manual focus to autofocus, entry level to professional range. And that's partly because this was produced for nine years, which in the digital age is huge. That is incredibly successful as a camera run. It was followed by nothing directly as digital cameras replaced this, but this would have been in the same tier as the D700, for those of you who are familiar with Nikon digital cameras. So now as we do, let's go over the camera's features, and if you have your Nikon N80, hopefully less disgustingly dusty than this one is, we'll go over what everything is. We'll start on what is technically the sides here, which which are the strap lugs, which is what you connect your camera strap to. Here we have the drive mode switch lock, this little button right here. So if we try to move this switch, we can't do it, but if we push this button down, we can. And that allows us to switch between single shot, continuous, self timer, and multiple exposure mode. That are the, that's what these four symbols here mean. Here we have the mode dial, program, shutter priority, aperture priority, and manual and we'll talk about what each of those modes are in the second video, I believe. Let me double check my script. The script is eight pages long, um, so it is a little bit more extensive than my typical script. Now, you know what? It's not in there. Um, so let's talk about what the different shooting modes are right now so that I don't forget to do it. P is program mode, meaning that the camera will do all of the thinking for you. You just have to push the button and it will decide the best shutter speed and aperture. Shutter priority means you pick the shutter speed and then the camera will pick the best aperture. Aperture priority means you pick the best aperture or the, the aperture that you want and the camera will pick the best shutter speed. And manual means you can screw up as badly as you want and the camera's not gonna help you. 
basically with manual, you pick the aperture and the shutter speed and just make sure that they give you a meter reading that aligns with what the film needs or that gives you a creative effect that you're looking for. CSM is custom mode. Video 3 will deal exclusively with this dial. And um, we'll come here in video three and look at every single custom function. So if you're here looking for those, pause this, open up video three in another window, come back and finish this video. And then ISO allows you to select your film speed if you don't wanna use the rated speed with the DX code, or if your film cassette doesn't have a DX code, this is where you would come to adjust your film speed. We have the flash hot shoe here, the pop-up flash right here. This is your LCD screen. This is your film plane indicator right there. It's a little raised area next to the LCD screen. This is the LCD screen illuminator button right here, and this in conjunction with another button right here, the flash button, if you push those both down, it will allow you to rewind your film partway through a roll, or I believe in the custom functions, one of the options is to not automatically rewind your film, in which case you'd have to hold these down to rewind it manually every time you finish a roll. This is your EV compensation button right here next to that little green dot. Next to your EV compensation is your flash compensation button. Then around the shutter speed dial is this little switch off and on is your power switch. And this is your shutter speed button right there. On the front of the camera, the command dial right here, the front mode dial, they call it. Autofocus illuminator, illuminator, so if you're in low light, the autofocus illuminator will turn on to illuminate your scene so that the autofocus can work. And there is a custom function to disable that, and we'll see that in the third video. This right here is your depth of field preview. Lens release, lens mount, lens autofocus drive interface, shooting mode, manual, single servo and continuous servo. And then this little switch here has a, it connects to the old um, AI lenses, not the pre-AI lenses, but the auto indexing lenses, but I'm not 100% certain what it does. I've had a bunch of cameras come through that have this and I've not found it in any of the manuals and I've tried searching for it online and I can't figure it out. So if you know what this little switch is, please leave me a comment below and let me know because I'm intensely curious and I have no idea what it does. And then of course we have the red stripe, which is the hallmark of uh, many Nikon cameras. On the side while we're here, we have the film back release switch. Come on, there we go. Which you use just to open up the film back. On the back itself, we have the film type window right there, which will allow you to look through it to see what kind of film you have. This is the image bracketing button right here next to the green green but dot. Then here we have the, the flash mode selector button right here. On the back of the camera, we have the film type window right here that lets you see what kind of film you're using. The film bracketing button that we'll see how to use in the second video. Flash mode button we'll see in the second video. Viewfinder window. Diopter adjuster right here, which you can slide up and down to adjust your diopter if you have a low prescription or like me. Uh, and you have to wear glasses, find the neutral position and then just leave it there. This dial right here is the metering mode selection dial. Uh, there's a little white line on it that lines up whether you are in center weighted, matrix, or spot metering mode. So center weighted, matrix, and spot. In this dial is the auto focus lock, auto exposure lock button right here, rear command dial right there. This whole assembly right here is the multi-control pad for focus area selection, focus area locking, and AF mode area selection. Some added features as well exist on the QD version of this and QD version owners, which I am not, one. I don't own a QD version of this, should look at the manual to find out how to use the quartz date uh, interface items that are also on the back of this. Um, but every N80 should, has the same information. I think the QD layout back here is a little bit different. On the bottom of the camera, we have the tripod bushing made in Thailand, serial number and battery chamber. And this camera takes two CR123 batteries and we'll see that at the very beginning of video two. On the inside of the camera, we have the film cassette chamber, DX code readers, 
film guide pins right here, kind of. They're not really pins, they're molded into the body. Film guide rails, the inner rails work by sandwiching the film up against the pressure plate to keep it flat on plane. And then the outer rails keep the film from moving up and down as it travels through the camera. Then here we have this little, there's no film tension sprocket here, but there is a little uh, triangular deal at the bottom that keeps the film from moving backwards. Plus this type of take up also helps keep, also keeps the film from moving backwards. This is the film take up spool. And then there's a little red indicator there that shows you where to leave the film leader to take up film. And we'll see how to do that in the second video. This is the um, film tension roller that goes right here with the Steinbeck. Five minutes, pup, okay? This roller sandwiches up against the film right here to keep it, uh, to keep the proper tension on it so that the film take up spool will advance it. Film pressure plate, which keeps the film plat flat here. This foam prevents light from fogging your film around the window. And then this spring keeps the film cassette in place when it's in the camera so that the film will come off of it correctly aligned. Some notes on the Nikon N80. This is basically a stripped down F100, which is uh, one of the more coveted Nikon cameras. So if you're looking for an F100 but can't find one or can't afford one, the N80 is a pretty darn good uh, stand-in. The differences between it and the F100 are that it has slightly lower build quality, one stop slower fastest shutter speed, meaning that the um, fastest shutter speed on the F100 is one eight thousandth. This goes up to one four thousandth, and it also has no weather sealing. So, but this is a really good com camera that's comparable to most of the functions of the F100, and uh, will will stand up pretty well. It's it's a it's a decently it's a decent camera. I think this is a, a very nice camera to get. So a few things not to do with your camera. Do not store the camera with the shutter ready to fire. Always discharge it to release tension on the springs. Although I don't know that with this camera you can actually do that. So that really isn't as big. A, it's not as big a deal with the 2000s cameras as it was for the generations before it. Don't touch the shutter, which can lead to bricking the shutter and ruining it, rendering your camera unusable. Don't touch the mirror that's under the lens here because that can cause the mirror to be desilvered, which can impair your uh, viewfinder image quality as well as metering because metering is done in the prism. Don't leave your camera or lenses in your car because the heat can damage them and oils can get to places they shouldn't because they get very thin and flow all over. And then when they get back to their normal temperature, they muck up the works. Also cold can cause the oils in them to get very thick and break down because they freeze and then they break down and get gummy. And that can cause the, the oils in the camera not to work properly as well. And also just leaving this in your car, which looks frankly like a digital camera. It doesn't take long for someone to smash your window, grab it and run off. And then you're out your camera and out a car window. Don't store it in a plastic bag or box, which can lead to you getting fungus unless you have a very good and charged desiccant pack in with your camera gear. So if you do that, like I keep a lot of my gear in Pelican cases, make sure you have rechargeable desiccant packs and that you keep them recharged. Don't let it get wet, it's not weather sealed. And just remember your Nikon N80 is a precision tool that should be handled with care and respect. And as long as you take care of your camera, your camera will take care of you. Steinbeck, quit chomping on your toenails. <laughs> Thank you for watching this video. Please give me a thumbs up. That lets me know that I'm on the right track producing content which is useful and helpful to you. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the comments section below. I'm pretty good about checking these every couple of days and answering questions. If you have any suggestions or ideas for future videos, and if I have the technical know-how and equipment, I'm more than happy to make those. One last thing, thank you everyone for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. I gotta get up, Steinbeck. I have to turn off the camera. <laughs>